You shouldn't cook it in a liquid if you want it to Maillard react. What is that term? Maillard. What does that mean? It's like uh, steak crust. Okay. Is often the term. Yeah. That reaction that like crisps stuff up. And that's great. I, it is critical. The The texture and surface oh. of certain foods can make or break it. it. Yeah. I cannot believe he's still pulling. Well, that was just shoveling. liquid, Josh. Yeah, that was just <laughs> pure That was sauce. just fluid. <laughs> the smell must have been unimaginable. Pungent smoke and fish. Mm. Kick ass. Kick ass. Kick fucking ass. What's this? What's this? What's this? A trick with a twist. Somebody do something. Call somebody and make it quick. I'm sorry. I lied. Just wanted to guide everybody to this and go with a ride. With a lever or whatever. Right now. Right now. I better make it quick. Hey, hey. Look down. Give me out of this. And now push the button. Come on. Come on. I'm big all of a sudden. Oh. Even when given opportunities to be famous, Cobra has made zero efforts to make that happen. I think the best example I saw was Chaz was sitting there throwing the guy money. $50, $20, just to get a message through to him. And he finally gets through to him. A couple days later, clearly they had, like, organized some sort of business meeting because Chaz sends him $20 and says, Hey, what's up, brother? I think you missed your meeting the other day. <laughs> Give me a call. And Josh literally says, I mean, this is coming on the back of a $20 bill for someone like Josh is pretty great. Yeah. He says, yeah, I will when I ca when I get around to it. <laughs> Damn. Hey, what's up, brother? I think you missed your meeting the other day. Give me a call, Chaz. Yeah, I'll be I will when I can, when I get around to it. Did he actually start to say when I can and then yes. change his mind? What do you think drove that? He did. Can sort of implies that when you have the ability to, you will. And when I get around to it, sort of like, eh, whenever I want to, maybe I will. He right? had to downgrade so it, it. Yeah. Yeah. It gets him off the hook a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of a power move at the same time. I just watched that doc again. And the funniest part, his ex-friend Kyle's like, you're nothing. You, ha you lie about everything. Who are you? You're just beef rave. You're just some fucking guy. <laughs> and Chaz doesn't try to win the argument. He says, fuck you. You're just beef rave. Some fake internet troll, dude. Fuck you. Anyways, you two. Yo. <laughs> Anyways, you two. Yo. <laughs> He's feeling it. Grabbing a celebratory yeah. delicious pizza. Celebratory. Yeah. Why not? I'll put the butt in it. Signed. My life's about to change for the better. Oh. I'm going places with my fucking life. While these trolls sit here and talk a bunch of mad, mean smack. Oh, yeah. Trust and fucking believe. Trust and fucking believe. When my name's recognized all over fucking Hollywood, what the fuck are they going to say? Oh, damn. Oh. He was so into the idea. When my name's recognized all over Hollywood. What the fuck are these trolls going to say? Oh, look at Cobra now. We fucked with him as hard as we could, and it didn't work. And now he's a fucking big-time celebrity. Shit. And the important thing I've always told myself is... He did. And what's kind of interesting about this is he kind of displayed that there was still somewhere for him to go all this time. He had yeah. greater heights. Uh, and that involved being a big Hollywood guy, voice actor. Yeah, it's all very nebulous, right? Yeah. It's not like he has a clear trajectory of, of, of what success looks like or, or how, you know, he wants to have a career. He just wants to be a Hollywood guy, big <laughs> in Hollywood, whatever that means.
all it took was some guy to pretend that he was making a cartoon. Because Chaz added Clint on Facebook. They talked. Clint and Chaz talked. And uh, Josh and Clint talked about Chaz. And they were in, dude. They were in. Clint, I can't believe... Clint talked to Chaz and went, oh, yeah, this guy's on the straight and narrow. He's on the level. It really does illustrate for the umpteenth time Clint's lack of perception. Yeah. And inability to recognize. Chaz was visibly insane. Yeah. And Clint's like, oh, yeah, sounds good. Give me a call on my phone. Just go ahead and uh, add me on Facebook care how fucking successful of a celebrity I've become. I never let the successful success of go a celebrity. to my fucking head. And I appreciate <laughs> you <laughs> <more fucking results. laughs> Believe that. Can, can you pause it? Someone whispered into his ear, I have a project for you to work on. <laughs> and he has already come up with a story about how he's not going to get a big head about it. It's like, dude, you haven't even gotten successful and you, you already have... The very first whiff of success, you already have a fantasy about how you're going to be <laughs> once you're rich and powerful. I'm That's a humble insane. human being. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's already Maybe. made it in his mind. It's oh, already yeah. done. 100%. But yeah, your boy King Cobra is about to be doing voiceover work for a show that's going on Comedy Central. You wait and see. And here's the best part of it. The boss of the entertainment company the who boss. hired me for the show said, and I quote, I'm never going to fire you, Josh. Fuck your trolls. They're not going to get you fired from this job like Ugh. they did with your previous jobs. D, like, I think that's hear, interesting. Man. He says previous right. jobs. Yeah. So even by this time, he believes the idea that he got fired from the office by the trolls. And... I mean, as far as I know, there really wasn't any kind of interference going on. They may have gotten phone calls and oh. stuff. Yeah, there's there's no evidence that anyone ever once harassed him at that job. He, he quit because the uh, chef didn't like him because yes. he was gross and weird and a, a greaseball. Yeah, he said um, the new chef came in, didn't like him, told him to change his clothes, would be kind of yeah. snarky. Yeah. You just were a weird, smelly guy who probably looked at this lady a little too closely. And, and they, he was also... And he quit! Yeah, and he quit. He didn't even get he fired. fired. He quit. Yeah. He was also very obsessed with one of the waitresses. Yep. He oh, had yeah. that I, picture I on his desktop. Yeah, I believe she's still uh, one of his like phone lock screen. He doesn't yeah. like to give up. No. Uh, well, that's because all of these women still secretly like him. Yeah. Even the women in high school that rejected him and humiliated him for years, they secretly like him. The same chicks I fl flirted with in high school going, I regret rejecting Saunders. He's a really good guy. He can be an asshole, but he's also he actually has a heart of gold. And I'm laughing at that, going, the only reason the chicks feel bad about rejecting me in high school is because I'm a famous YouTuber, and they're not doing shit with their lives. I've mentioned it constantly, but there was evidence that he was telling people at the bar about his new burgeoning career. I always get them mixed up. It was either Frosties or CY to request his... Oh, yeah! yeah. Oh, my God! You're right! Yeah. yeah, the guy asked him how the cartoon went, and he goes... That's not that's not happening anymore. Uh, Josh, at this time, I am not going to rescind your your, your eighty six. This is something that we can be, that can be brought up later. But at this moment, I am I am afraid that you are still trespassed on my premises. Fair enough, fair enough. And again, I'm yeah. sorry this had to happen like that, but. Well, I I am too. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to like whenever that uh, that voice, they know that Comedy Central thing again comes through. I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. That, uh, uh, that was. Yeah, that didn't go through. That was... Oh. Not only was he denied re-entry, they rubbed salt in it by bringing up the whole voice acting gig that didn't play out. Frankly, he, for someone with 56,000 subscribers or wherever he's at now, per video, he's not getting that many views. Well, 
He's no he Ray William to. Johnson, that's for sure. <laughs> he <laughs> sure ain't. He just does stuff. And I'm not going to edit it. I'm not going to call anybody back. He just has no idea, no instincts on how to make good content. I think it starts with knowing what your audience likes and trying right. to prioritize that and emphasize it. And if you're just in your own bubble, yeah, you don't think about that ever. He doesn't know his audience. He has no idea who watches him. Clint would say it's a 12-year-old, uh, literally a 12-year-old. <laughs> He's yeah, accused yeah, all the yeah. trolls of being prepubescent boys. And <laughs> if you were to put all the trolls aside, who does he imagine is listening? What age? What do they look like? Are they goth? Are they emo I, metalhead things? Yeah. I think they're emo metalhead things. I, I, I want to <laughs> believe that he thinks that his lifestyle is like fairly typical. And there are a bunch of just these crusty, fucking disgusting, <laughs> absolute leeches out there that are just like, Mouth open, watching his streams, going, that's cool. I want to eat a giant $40 hamburger, too. Oh, I wish I could eat that. Oh. All these other 30-year-old men who aren't allowed to have debit cards and haven't ever once tried to get their driver's license. You know, just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like it's a typical stuck. experience he's yeah. having. <laughs> Someone yeah. mentioned to me, they said, man, I... I really hope Josh is watching your stuff because they mentioned him wearing two bracelets or something, two spike bracelets, and saying that yeah. that's like a reference to the podcast. But in the past, we actually did talk about why isn't he going to Little Shop of Burgers? And this recent vid with that giant pile of ingredients he called a burger, <laughs> he really got into it. He used the word macabre, which was he did? interesting. Yeah. yeah. What really struck me about that, like, 45-minute long video is the entire video is just him explaining what's in the food <laughs> and that he's enjoying it. He did everything and but eat it, it though. <laughs> Got, like, yeah, he, two bites he in. He took a couple bites, and that was it. The rest was just emoting and expressing <laughs> and uh, recommending. Oh, oh, YouTube, you don't even know. I think he said the DoorDash person who made this for me, which he doesn't understand how the chain works. <laughs> he said they need a raise. Oh. Dude, the best line in that was when he said, my eyes were bigger than my appetite. Yeah. That's such a great line. And uh, my eyes were bigger than my appetite. So if I don't finish it, I'll definitely finish it later. It's amazing because for me, it, it translates immediately. And then I have to stop and be like, wait a second. Yeah. And to say my eyes are bigger than my appetite, your it doesn't appetite, even make any sense. No, no. <laughs> I think the eyes. <laughs> fuck. God, it's breaking my brain. I'm trying to identify what the appetite would be. It's the lack That's thereof. Your problem. No, you can't go there. You're going to uh -huh. end up in a hole of some kind. <laughs> you got to run from those thoughts. You can't thought get loop. too close to the boggle brain. I mean, a KFC double down thought loop. But the eyes are bigger <laughs> than the appetite. But the appetite is the eyes. And there's a lack of appetite. <laughs> and if his eyes are bigger. His relationship with language is fascinating. Oh, yeah. Is it <laughs> so tenuous? It... <laughs> when you say tenuous, <laughs> all I can think of yeah. is that his uh, connection to English and society is hanging on by a thread. He is oh, one yeah. step away from just being a caveman and not being able to communicate with us at all, aside from maybe some grunts, angry yells. We've gotten to the point where a lot of his content is him enjoying food with guttural noises, <laughs> right? And he's just sort of repeating the same things over and over again. A little shop of burgers. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. Double the... I started watching a ton of videos about him talking about his house and his plans because I kind of equated it with him really, truly being famous. I mean, having yeah. all the money, if he actually did have a big music career and he was big on YouTube. First yeah. little fun fact about his house. And I can't believe it took me this long to notice this, but he said it would be 20 acres of land four miles out of town. Four miles outside of town on 20 acres of land. 
It's very specific. Yes. Or four miles, 20 acres, 420. <laughs> no way! It never hit me until oh, when I was my researching God. this. Numerous videos, 20 acres of land, four miles out of town. I never realized he made that decision because it's 420. His obsession with numbers. It drives everything he does. He's just weaving it into his fantasy. Yeah, 420. Why not? Magic numbers. Strange. You'd think if this is really his dream house, it's going to last him for the rest of his life. He put a little more consideration into whether or not 20 acres is really what he wants. Four miles right. out of town. Is that really far away enough? Casper is in the middle of nowhere. If you get four miles out of town, I mean, there's going to be nothing there. There's nothing there. It's just <laughs> freeway and death. <laughs> I, mean, I guess that's God, right? Well, he, I don't know. Maybe it makes sense. He said he wanted to transplant a gigantic forest wherever he winds up. 20 acres of land, four miles outside of town. Surrounded by pine trees and maple trees. I'll have them imported and planted. It may surprise you to know that in the draft for his mansion, the S in his symbol, you'd imagine it would be pointing up, right? It would be on top? Yeah. Nope. Balls up. The logo is Why? actually upside down. Maybe the way it's oriented on his arm, that's how he actually imagines it? Being down? Oh, it's not an erection. It's There's pointing down. Lying there, stretched out. It looked really weird that way. That has got to be the dumbest fucking thing that he continues to defend. <laughs> that it doesn't it look is, like it, dick and balls. It looks like a dick and balls, and it's clearly just him sitting in some fucking math class drawing the S and drawing a dick. Yeah. So how and do I make this he, shape look strong? Yeah, strong and masculine. It doesn't mean anything. No. Why do you need it to mean something? It doesn't represent <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's you drew the universal S and you, <laughs> you made it balls. It's going to be a little difficult to make out at first, but you'll see at the top, there's the S thing. <laughs> and it's down and then it goes up and there's the balls. Isn't that it's crazy? The balls. The balls. Got to be unstructurally sound, right? It wouldn't work. No. It would be a massive lightning rod. The wind would blow it right down. Like what? <laughs> Is that J J P S? J F S. There? It's got his initials. J F S. Yeah. At the top of the wow. central dong clock tower. How old was he when he drew this? Hmm. <laughs> He was about 18 when he was first in the basement. That looks like a remedial student drew that. In oh, like it's rough. Yeah. Seventh grade. Because he's done, I think, like MS Paint drawings as well since then of the... What? Yeah. He just like oh. drew over a, an existing thing. Yeah, here it is. He drew this? He, uh, he just basically... He made this? He, yeah, yeah. No fucking way. I love way. this picture. Yeah. It's on his Facebook. Look at that car out front, first of all. That. Look at that. Look at that fucking, <laughs> like, <laughs> 1994 fucking shit pile. <laughs> Ford Fiesta. Yeah. Old crusty JPEG. I guess copied and pasted some kind of bell tower. It could be a chimney, for all I know. Put a clock yeah. on it. it. Drew on the scaffolding. And then, of course, you know. Had to paint it black and add the rest of the green. And he's done. Of course. Dude, this is... I mean... <laughs> this is really dumb. This is so <laughs> dumb to do. And to think doesn't look incredibly stupid. Man. I can't believe I didn't know that he drew this. What was the one that you did? Can you show me a comparison? Because he said it doesn't look like... Oh, yeah, he One was you did. not happy with that. Mine was just imagining him just smashing together all of his ideas into this mess. Yeah. I mean, that looks a lot more like a...
structure. <laughs> that's great. This one's it's really kind funny. of falling yeah, over a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The disuse and and he just kept adding more bell towers to it. I feel like he really would if he had unlimited resources. You know, it's like getting yeah. a tattoo; it loses its novelty. Got to add another a new one. Yeah, new clock tower, new bell tower. This looks nothing like my clock tower <laughs> mansion. But the video made me laugh. In his MS Paint version, he doesn't draw the symbol. Yeah, it is absent. Hmm. Ran out of room, I guess. I'm sorry, but like, look behind it. It looks like he had to block certain things out. Copy pasted clouds. Something was there originally, and he had to get rid of it. He described it as the house from that Eddie Murphy movie, and he's talking about Haunted Mansion. <laughs> that movie that Eddie Murphy was in with with that haunted house. Well, the house that you see Eddie Murphy in that movie, that style of house. Josh's whole life is just stuff that he got fixated with in like 2003 and that has ruled his life since the media he was being exposed to the movies buzzy it. the knowledge bug game introduced him to cobras he's dumb. pop yeah, he's music dumb. backstreet boys britney spears the materials he was very specific about it he said is going to be made out of pure concrete with steel on the outside but he also said it would be full of lead he wanted so, it inside the walls. Inside of the walls to be lead. Yes. But, but the outside would be steel. Steel. Like a steel wall. Yeah. Man, we could get really lost in speculation here. Oh, I mean, him just thinking. I could probably explain it for you, honestly. He wanted it to be, as he put it, apocalypse proof. So uh -huh. he started thinking of the strongest materials he could think of, and then something Metal. that would... Yeah, steel, concrete. And, and also lead. To lead also, because that's a strong one. Maybe protect against radiation if he's imagining nuclear I, fallout or something. I would be floored if he understood the idea of, like, insulating from nuclear fallout. I think it would be condemned immediately, because those shows about flipping yeah. houses, they do sometimes find lead in them, and they go, oh, yeah, this has to all be taken out. <laughs> this is going to cost you a lot of money. It'd be better if you never knew about it. But now that we do, you better open up your wallet. You're going to take a bath on this house now. In addition to the secret passageways, there would be one that led to a Japanese-style sauna modeled after Japanese hot springs. Hell yeah. Let's see it. Go Let's go, Josh. Meet up with Ryoko and the gang in there, just like my oh, yeah. Japanese animes. Damn. He's going to have to win the lottery twice, I feel like. He's really got these really high expectations for what he thinks he can buy with, I don't know, $12 million. And the only way I'm going to be able to afford that dream house is if I either win the lottery or become super famous on YouTube. Like, I'd have to have like 50 million subscribers to even afford it. It'll happen one day. You just wait and see, man. You just wait and see that Second Empire Victorian mansion. Ooh. It Money doesn't mean anything to him. And I think, honestly, this might be the one aspect of his life wherein he behaves like a gothic bad boy rock star. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck how much anything costs. He'll just spend whatever money he doesn't have on it. Some dent head's going to send him 200 bucks and ask him, hey, you want to be on my podcast? And he's going to say, uh, when I get around to it, I'll start thinking about <laughs> maybe thinking about it. Thanks. <laughs> he does not care about money. It just materializes. It just happens. I just think of the Heath Ledger Joker burning that mountain of cash. Like, oh, you guys take this too seriously. Gas is cheap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He dips into the well. He'll start up a live stream. And, you know, if he hasn't streamed in a long time, it comes gushing out. These people are pent up. They yeah. say, oh, man, I've been waiting for this. I'm busting. There he is. And they throw money hey, listen at to my band. You got to listen to my band. Oh, the oh thanks for the money. He, talking about everyone asking things of him. And he's saying, oh, yeah, when I get around to it, when I feel like it. 
Has he ever been on the opposite end of things, asking others for help and saying, hey, when are you going to be done with this? When can I come on, etc.? I would say no. I, I don't think he asks overtly for much. I think the only time he ever does that is when someone is doing something for him related to earning money. Uh, he got that really cool artwork done for that album. And he said, oh, they finally got around to doing it. And I forgive Parker Jackson for taking forever to uh, complete the album cover. It was worth the wait. Both of these professionals are going out of their way to do what is essentially community service on your behalf. <laughs> and you're like, well, I finally got around to doing it. You don't give. He doesn't care. He does not value other people's time. He doesn't care. He never seems to want to escalate his YouTube career, as he would call it, by working with others. It's always just doing his own thing. If parameters don't change, he's going to do exactly what he's doing right now until the day he dies. This is it. Going to watch he's cartoons, he's done. fart, yeah. eat fast food, maybe That's make it. a wand. He's barely doing wands now. He really is. Ba- and I don't blame him. He's making... Very little money per wand. Yeah. And he's making an ass load from people who are just like, here you go. Here's $200. Here's a hundred bucks. He's just being handed money. I feel like I'm being really negative, but when you start really looking at the quality of content he's been putting out and the effort that he's put out, it's terrible. Yeah. It's kind of like, and he shouldn't be feeling this way at all. Weird comparison, but notch the guy who made Minecraft is miserable now because he yeah. he has no challenge anymore. He's got piles of money. He used to like developing games, sort of. He would take a lot of vacations. Mm-hmm. But he seems like he can't be motivated to do anything. And I think it's because everything is taken care of for him. There's no more obstacles to overcome. Josh, like you were saying, he's set. He has a place to live and he's got cash coming yeah. in. And I think that might be why he's seen a lot more trolling in the last, I don't know, six months. Mm -hmm. It's because people are trying to jostle him free from this homeostasis that he finds himself in. He's in a rut. He's in a rut. I wonder if he thinks he's already famous enough. If his goal was to be a full-time YouTuber and earn enough money, pay for his stuff through YouTube... He's almost there, yeah. right? And he's done nothing, <laughs> right? And, you know, you can't really fault him for thinking that this is how it works. You just continue to put up crap and people will start throwing hundreds of dollars at you. When he was much younger in the green basement, one of his many goals, in addition to his mansion and becoming a rock star, he would say, when I make it big on YouTube... For many people, I don't think this would qualify, but for him, you know, like you're saying, he's getting money, he's getting paid, he's got tons of subs, especially compared to what he used to have. I would say he probably thinks he has it made on YouTube, yeah. I think he recognizes that, and I even think he appreciates it. It doesn't motivate him to do anything. It doesn't change how he's going to do stuff. For someone who talks a lot about magic and it being a portion of his identity for a long time, he doesn't really explain it. He just talks about energy generally. Like, I've never heard him say, I mutter these incantations. I use these sorts of herbs. It's always just like, you just gotta use energy and focus your chi. His core strategy comes from that witchcraft book. And what it preached was, all you got to do is really believe in it. As long as you believe, it'll work out. Worked with his YouTube channel, right? He's done nothing but believe. (laughs) Nothing but believe. (laughs) Low. By the day, you'll see big accounts on Instagram. YouTubers are, are reacting to him. Fucking moist critical. And I guess that way, he's famous. Amir, hey, pack this up, bring it home to your house. Next time we need a custom wand made by King Cobra. Amir needs a podcast with this guy. Where would he be, though, if, if there were no internet? Can you imagine what his life would be like? Would he still be working at Wendy's because no one would have gotten him fired? Or would he be working like one day a week? He'd be at the ARC sorting glass, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
not my job. I learned the job slow. And now I know it by heart. His notoriety has allowed him to stagnate in ways that wouldn't be possible otherwise. And it's not easy having a lot of harassment directed at you, no matter who you are. I mean, he is talking about trolls every other sentence now. He can't yeah. stop thinking about them. It's not good for him, but I think ordinary people would probably struggle, maybe not as much, but I, I think they just want to quit and leave or something. It's very difficult. Yeah. I think a normal, rational thinking person would leave the internet. A normal, yeah. well-thinking person wouldn't be in that position. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but it does kind of bring up a question. Do you think that he thinks other celebrities, and I mean like normal-ass celebrities or streamers or content creators on YouTube, do you think he thinks that people are sending Badlands chugs, hamster bedding, and bags of <laughs> ice constantly? He seems to talk about that being a product of his fame in some respects. I don't know if he's considered whether they go through it or not. The other YouTubers never complain about it. They don't air their dirty laundry and uh, yap about trolls and stuff. He might think, oh, this is what separates me from normal YouTubers. I don't think they go through all this. They're not getting harassed this badly. Maybe there's something about me that is causing this. Maybe there's something I got to change. I know that he said, oh, people harass me because I am not afraid to be who I am, because they're jealous, because blah, blah, blah. But he does kind of think that just being famous puts you in a position to be constantly and ruthlessly harassed by the internet. I get really stuck on the whole, I can't have a job thing because I'm so famous, the trolls will harass yeah. me. And it doesn't yeah. help that Clint actively enforces this very binary view of things. Because Clint has the same misperception. Yes. Absolute freak out <laughs> on the Facebook page. Yeah. Freak out is the only way you can describe it. Because I think he was posting it like midnight. There's two factions. One of them hates me for blah, like totally misunderstanding everything. Seizure robot. I told you to stop making fun of my boy. Your boy is silly and funny and does things that are so outrageous and silly, other people must comment on it. Is it funny when he's got huge boogers all over his beard and doesn't <laughs> notice for a three hour live stream? Yeah. It's funny. I'm going to post a picture of it. It doesn't mean that, that you hate him. It means it's funny. There was a lot of good versus evil talk coming out of Clint. And he yeah. said something like, have you guys considered if maybe you're the villains and we're not the bad guys? And that's exactly the kind of like base level ph philosophical thought I'd expect Clint to have, <laughs> right? Caveman. Have you ever yeah. considered that maybe you bad, me good? <laughs> what? Also, he's very confused as to why people become so incensed with Josh and get mad at him yeah. and want to yep. do mean things. Well, Clint, Josh says horrible things online. Vicious, vile, nasty, hateful things. And that is at least... Yeah. One reason, because he can't seem to think of anything, one reason why people get mad at him and mess around yeah. with them. I'm going on a diet. Time to take out the trans fat. Many people that enjoy internet personalities like Josh and so forth are pretty well adjusted. It may be a weird quirk about them that they're into sure. this kind of content. They may just have an yeah. appetite for a certain kind of entertainment. What I've found is uh, many of the people I've spoken to who have jobs, they make money, they have healthy relationships, they don't like TV. I think almost everyone I've spoken to who watches Cobra does not have a cable subscription. They watch YouTube, and they like very candid, spontaneous types of comedy. Real stuff. Yeah. And that's it. That's what it boils down to. People like watching it as a reality TV show. Uh, in, in some of these kind of uh, communities of internet 
and eccentric. This we'll is say. even less curated. There's no producers yeah. getting in the mix, hyping stuff up or creating plot lines, hopefully. In this right. case. But yeah. Something that really surprised me. He said that in his house, after he passes, he wanted to be on display in a glass case somewhere in the house. Well, actually, if I got my dream house built, I'd say put my corpse on display in um, a case of some sort, you know, and uh, turn my dream mansion into a rock and roll museum. But, um, yeah. I, that what do you think me- you... Go Do you ahead. think you'd be holding something like a drink combo, like the eternal <laughs> drink combo, or or Sean <laughs> yeah, doing like a Sean and Saunders in the hereafter? <laughs> like a, a you used to see an assholes with no lives. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I wasn't ready for him to say that that he wanted to be on display. Yeah, that's like uh, that's Lenin. macabre. Like the Soviet leader. <laughs> yeah, look upon him. <laughs> In addition, it would become a rock and roll museum. I mean, that's pretty vague, just rock and can roll. You imagine, can you imagine how bare the museum of Josh's musical <laughs> triumphs would be? <laughs> There'd be like two guitars on a wall and like a handful of tapes, and that would be <laughs> that would be his rock and roll museum. Ozzy cutouts, <laughs> Ozzy paraphernalia. I don't know what he's yeah. imagining. Rock and roll. I, why didn't he say goth or something? Why rock and roll? I'm so confused. What a big, yeah, here's Maroon 5's uh, <laughs> fucking guitar. You know what I mean, like, what? Rock and roll? I'm going to have a museum about music made on guitars. He's really stuck on being perceived. It really does yeah. rule his life. How he's being perceived. When he talked about when he made it big... When he had lots of money, he also talked about his car. He wanted to have a Studebaker with a giant skull on it that was really noisy. He wanted to drive around town with this loud-ass engine and just have people look at him. I trust and believe if I had my Studebaker, I'd be showing that shit off at Hot Rod shows. Oh, trust and believe. Trust and motherfucking believe I'll be taking that shit to hot rod shows, hitting up all the YouTubers who do hot rod shows on YouTube. For yeah. once, was something that wasn't just horror and disgust, <laughs> but with interest, maybe he's trying to get someone to <laughs> receive him in a way that's a little new, you know? It's the energy, though, is just so like, hey, look at me! Just, hey, look at me! <laughs> Just the sound of the engine going down the street, yeah. Just the sound of the fucking engine idling down the street, yeah. It's enough to make you want to jizz your pants. And they would hear him ringing his bells every day, and they'd have to talk about him and say, oh, what's that? It's Cobra ringing his bells. It's that stinky guy. Yeah. (laughs) The guy who stinks so bad he had to live four miles out of town. I'd be like, who's this cool cobra with the clock tower on his mansion? You know what I'm saying? Like, people, you know, it instantly become a historical landmark in Casper, trust and belief. People driving by four miles inside of town are going to be like, oh shit, you hear that? Yeah. There's a clock going off somewhere. I don't know how far the, the bell sound would carry, but I don't think oh, it would man. be far enough. For that to not be a nuisance, I, I think everyone shooting would that bell out of the tower. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way. He wants to torment <laughs> them. He just wants them to be forced to hear him making a racket all day long. He wanted solar panels, and then at a later time, he wanted to add wind energy. And then what got me was he wanted the most efficient toilets. In his house. Every toilet would be very good at conserving water. And every toilet in my house, every bit of plumbing in my house will be the most eco-friendly plumbing that I can buy so that my mansion conserves water. What about the Chevy Shitter? Oh, yeah, he's big on the, the Chevy Ford Shitter. Eagle, dude. I yeah. bet the Studebaker would have a toilet built in so that he can just <laughs> shit it up as he's blowing through town. God, <laughs> now that's the real dream for him is being able to to just dump his liquid shit 
into his vehicle while <laughs> driving through town honking. He would absolutely destroy that town with his fucking antics. You know, when they, they have the cool effect where uh, they rev up the engine and flames come out of the tailpipe. It'd be poop. It would just be a big splatter of shit spray <laughs> that would fire out. <laughs> yeah. Rock oh, yeah. and roll. He really, really wants to be vindicated. And I think you oh, yeah. see that in the Chaz stuff. You're right. Because after he gets, I don't know, it, it, it takes like $500 for Chaz to get any <laughs> amount of Cobra's attention. But once he's hooked on Chaz and really buys it, He's like, I'm going to get back at all those trolls are going to get doxxed and then I'm going to make a bunch of money and going to spread my demon wings and fly. You all told me I couldn't do it. What's going to happen then when I become a famous voice actor and end up getting like jobs on a bunch of different cartoons? This is real life, YouTube, and I'm taking off. Time to spread my demon wings and fly. He is so ready to win. You know what I mean? Yes. Like taking down the subreddit post oh, where yeah. he saw that immediately posted on his Facebook. Like I told you guys that this would happen. The Cobra's coming back. He's mad at the naysayers. He wants it. He's yeah. really upset with them. This also includes his biological mom. He oh, I bet. wrote in his song, my mom, Laura, that when he was famous, she would come crawling back and he would shoo her away. Something like, don't let the door hit you on the ass. And if you try to contact me when I'm making a big in Hollywood, as a big time name is Bishop. I'm gonna tell you to hit the door and get raped by Satan, cause if you really wanted to know me, you would have came to see me before I was making it dead. He's mad at a lot of people who did him dirty, supposedly. Yeah. He's got a lot of uh, resentment. I loved it when Cobra said that Clint was jealous of his fame. Freaking dad is intimidated by my YouTube fame. Otherwise, you wouldn't be like, oh my God, you're too drunk. It also ties into the naysayers. You got to punish them. He wants to punish his mom and mm -hmm. his dad. So I think yeah. if Josh were to really be successful... There'd be more sentiments of, uh, yeah, my art's better. and My dad's jealous. He would probably be fairly magnanimous at the beginning. He would say, oh, my dad's great. He does all this cool stuff, blah, blah, blah. But if he has a fight with his dad, he's the guy who's going to reach for anything he can to bludgeon you with. <laughs> and he's going to go right for Clint's artwork. And is pain. A hundred percent of the time. He's, that's where he's going for the jugular. I'd never heard him really comment on Clint's art. He wants to for that bogart it. He wants to steal the style as best he can. He, he can't do it very well, mm -hmm. but he never wants to acknowledge it, like you said, recognize it to anything. He moves in a constant state of defeat. Right? <laughs> like body slouch, just covered in crap, not making eye contact with people, stinking like filth, <laughs> waiting for the day when his ship's going to come in. He's going to put no effort into getting that ship in. But once it's there, he's going to fucking enjoy it. One time, he's not completely defeated by life. <laughs> he's going to lean into it. It's got to be stressful just having to hope things work out and believe in it rubbing yeah. your hands together, fidgeting and stress farting, that it's all going to be okay. <laughs> That's him with the dry spell, too. Very similar to the fame thing in yeah. that he's made not a lot of effort to find a woman to love his stinky boglum body. <laughs> like, At least for a night, he, yeah. He just thinks that both fame and a woman that will love him was of suitable attractiveness will just fall into his lap. They're going to knock on the door one day and say, are you Josh? Here's a million dollars for the lottery you didn't play and a really hot goth woman that you never met. And he's going to say, <laughs> oh, yeah, Finally. sit down. Like, uh, yeah, about time, yeah. you know, the thanks for your support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his thing with Stephanie did not help at all because before Stephanie... He was still yeah. in the green basement saying, I'm not thinking about companionship anymore, and I feel that much better about it. It's out of my life. I'm just not going to have a girlfriend. 
I have the worst luck with girls, and I used to hate it, but now I just don't give a shit anymore because I know it's never going to happen, so I spend no time worrying about it whatsoever, and I'm a lot happier because of it. And then Stephanie came into the picture and cemented the idea that, yes, you just wait patiently, and a nice girl will present themselves to you, which is exactly what happened. One of Stephanie's yeah. friends helped it get going. Say, hello, oh, this girl likes you. Do you like her? Et cetera. At summer camp, a.k.a. Job Corps. And... I think he still believes that is the rule. There's one story where he said he wished he could go back in time with everything about him the way he is now and his yeah. facial hair. Having the facial hair yep. was something he specifically wished he had when he was younger, which is ridiculous because it's bizarre. It's a very unhealthy mindset. I'd say that's the beginning yes. of maybe a predator brain where you're like, man, I wish I could go back to high yeah. school as I am now. No. I would totally I, I, bang yeah. those girls as I am 100%. in this moment. Because he will reminisce about girls from high school yeah. and like even girls from elementary school. Yes. That one girl he'll talk about. And he'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember – Mm, she would wear that and that. You are a 30-year-old man right now describing how this 16, 14, 15-year-old girl looked and kind of getting into it. He loves the idea of them growing up and growing boobs and all that stuff. Yeah. He gets horned up talking about developing. It's unbelievably disturbing. I mean, yeah. that is that's one of the grossest things he does. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's dark. That, that, that has the grounds to be some really dark stuff. Can you imagine Josh going and taking like a, a community college art class or something? Ooh. Just right to meet a woman or something. He'd get kicked <laughs> out. They would ban him for doing you, something rotten. You yeah. stink. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Stinky. He is still a massive stalker, by the way. So... Yeah. He would probably just be staring constantly and taking photos, and he has a, a binder open up, and there's pics of the girls spilling out everywhere. He'd get banned. And I looked at her, and I was like, really? I wasn't staring at her either! It's weird. I had someone's <laughs> dad tell me this once, but basically... College and in that era, because people are just more active and social. You may not even be in, in college. You're just <laughs> hanging out with your buddies and meeting people. He said that is the meat of the friend sandwich. That's where you get your core <laughs> group that will probably stay with you for the rest of time. You may lose people here and there, but like your your best friends, your most regular friends usually show up during that period. And right. for Josh, you know, Darf. I hate to say mm -hmm. it, but Warlord kind of comes from the same era. Yeah. Scotty used to be one of his core friends. That was his <laughs> time to really make his yeah. friends and keep them. But now they're pretty much all gone. It's over. Days are gone. Why did he get on this idea that he gave a shit about the environment? Doesn't he not use Google, but he uses like savetheoceans.com or something? <laughs> are you really? familiar with it? Uh -uh. It's a search engine that for each search you do, oh. it, like, saves the whales or something. Again, yeah. more just stupid Clint influence. That kind of pseudo-activism. The term slacktivist yes. is used a lot to describe certain members of the Saunders family. I would donate a million dollars to poverty resistance because I genuinely feel bad about... That kind of thing. It would suck to be homeless in Casper. <laughs> it is remote. It's <laughs> fucking cold. And, and we, I mean, you're trapped there. And everyone hates you. There's no social programs. And Warlord himself, who I believe at this time is still without home, right? I know that he's banned from the men's shelter. Probably trying to con oh. people in there. Oh I'm sure God. he was a menace to the, the guys in Jesus. there. Because he is prone to doing that, <laughs> trying to get investments and stuff. It's just His awful. Investments, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah God, I can't believe that he tries to <laughs> oh, just extract money from people online with these investments. He will try to scam you into yeah. his Warhammer tabletop company. 
and then it'll say, and how would you like to fuck my ass? You want to... <laughs> he, he is he is everything. He's the whole package. He's out of control. He yeah. is totally nuts. <laughs> you think he'd let Warlord like live on a little patch of the twenty acres somewhere? I think a little he, tent, little pup tent. He would pay money to make him disappear, or he could be like a, a groundskeeper or something, a little groundskeeper shack, so yeah. that Warlord can take care of stuff. This little shack of horror and some God. kind of Silent Hill scenario where Warlord is just always on all fours for some reason. He starts <laughs> mutating into this goblin thing that roams the grounds. He actually did say he didn't want a lot of people coming over. Maybe some of his friends and maybe a friend of theirs could come over. He mentioned the intercom system where they yeah. could buzz in and he'd see Scotty saying he wants to come inside, stuff like that. I'd have a security gate where you have to like punch in a code to unlock it or a buzzer. Or like, <clears throat> and then I have like an intercom TV system at the front door like who is it push the button oh hey it's homeboy scotty what up man i'll let you in i would like to hope that all of the casper crew get a role at this new place scrapper steve would be there Ugh. like what i guess oh yeah he'd be there <laughs> are you kidding me no scrapper steve has to be there uh. he's, he's the creepiest person to be in your mansion if you want a goth Mansion, you have to have a weird guy like Scrapper Steve. He's, you know, skulking about in the dungeon. When you go to the Church of Cobra, he's there in a velvet, purple, hooded cloak thing, answering the door. Got hey, like a milky eye, welcome. like cool taste. Hey. Darflin, he could easily be like a defense contractor guy. He could. Oh, yes. Isn't his job to build munitions for the yes. police? He he works for some He's kind off. of weapons manufacturer. Yeah. Can you imagine this little like five foot two <laughs> troll following you around as your security detail wearing like a bulletproof vest? <laughs> when you are a child mm -hmm. in school and you get bullied, you come up with like really silly and far-fetched ways that you could get even with this person. Oh, very elaborate scenarios yeah. that will never happen. Never happen. Yeah. And they're kind of nice to think about because you're dumb and a kid. Yeah. That's Josh's whole reason to be famous. He wants to show all those girls that rejected him that they're missing out. He feels like he'll be vindicated if he turns out to be... Uh, a rock star, yeah. cool guy. Any kind of success. If he amounts yeah. to any kind of successful person, it is the, the big F you told you so moment for him. Like a serial killer. <laughs> you know, you see, these, you see these serial killers, there's nothing they can say to like redeem themselves. They'll be like, when I die and go to heaven, then you'll see. That's kind of what Josh is doing. He's like, well, when I die, Satan's going to make me his number one demon. Yeah. And I'm going to fucking go crazy down there. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing, like the fame thing. It's like you can't really disprove it. It's fantasy that he gets to have and you can't really refute. Other than make the observation that you've done nothing to work towards actualizing your fantasy. That's exactly what I was going to get at is in the early days, he would say, I'm going to make it big on YouTube, which I think in his mind still required some work. He was going to have to put in the time, make videos and yeah. so forth. But he also wanted to be a famous rock star. So he needed to work on his music. It was something that would have his involvement. Now it's just when I win the lottery, which really is just a matter of chance. It's not really because you did anything significant. He doesn't even play the lottery no. very often. <laughs> no. But he yeah. also believes that he is influencing it through his magic and his strong belief so somehow his magic must suck the success of his youtube channel i think is just a testament of how important it is just to be consistent and bang your head against the wall oh yeah forever he seems to have less awareness of his control over his own destiny and is sort of leaving everything up to chance in a way that he didn't when he was a lot younger and I might be wrong. Feel free to correct me. <laughs> Old head seizure. <laughs> he used to talk about 
drugs in a much more negative way than he does now. You know, oh, they say that marijuana is a gateway drug, but it's not a gateway drug. Marijuana is great. It's all natural. It can heal you. Now he's like, I shit my pants doing acid because I'm a rock star. <laughs> I wonder if that's him more fully embracing the rock star persona. I mean, maybe he feels like he's made it. Or is he trying to manifest success by behaving as if he's successful as a rock star? All I could think of is that he once famously said, meth is for pussies, which is really funny <laughs> to me. Meth is for pussies. For weak men. Only weak men do meth. He softened a lot towards cocaine. I think the biggest obstacle for him is that it's expensive. Otherwise, he'd be saying it's a plant. It it's so stepped on. Someone said that to him once, and now he says it all the time. It's so stepped on. It's a <laughs> once in a while kind of thing. It's the same what as chocolate. Thing? Cocaine comes from the same plant that makes chocolate. Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. So stupid. It feels new, this embrace of harder drugs. Let's face it, he has been told the risks of duster. I actually had a classmate growing up who died from huffing because they were skateboarding and then they fell into the river and drowned. And he oh, still yeah. goes through with it. With that mentality, why not just do any old drug he can get his hands yeah. on? I mean, the guy is huffing perfume to kill brain cells to no <laughs> effect, clearly. Because he doesn't um, like spray it. He just puts the nozzle no. up in his little orc nose and starts <laughs> sniffing as hard as he can. His, his orc nose. Yeah. He talked about, in a recent stream, how he didn't want to be a serial killer because it would follow stereotypes. So I've got all the makings of a serial killer, but I refuse to be a walking stereotype. Are you familiar with H.H. H. Holmes? The serial killer? Yeah, yeah. he built the uh, killer apartment complex. What they call it. Yeah. At the World's Fair. And mm -hmm. so it was just like, hey, come look at my wacky house. Isn't it strange? And then you'd get lost in it. There would be a colossal maze that he'd set up. There'd be doors that didn't go anywhere. And you'd gas them. He'd trap them and, and kill them all kinds of ways. Man, if Cobra knew about him, he'd be kind of excited at the idea. He might like the idea of at least spooking people and having them get lost in his house. 100%. Yeah. I'm not saying he would outright... No, really no, 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 no. But people, but, but he'd love even, to make them think that they were going to die in there. If he watched a solid YouTube video on H.H. H. Holmes, he'd go, Oh, yeah, Halloween time. I'd set that up. Yeah. And they'd think they were going to totally. die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to die. They're going to think they're going to die. <laughs> Doors that don't go anywhere, and toilets that don't flush. Toilets, <laughs> toilets, they don't flush. <laughs> Little fart chamber going on. Just yeah, you know, here's yeah. all my farts I've been saving up. Get ready for some gas. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he likes scaring people. His little hockey mask thing and hell posture and licking his knife. Being yeah. a yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. he he loves to freak people out. I, yeah. Uh, to bring this up again, yeah. um, after the, um, the getting thrown out of the Frosties video, where he's licking his bloody hand and talking <laughs> yeah. about how he loves the taste of blood. I busted my skin on my knuckle and it started bleeding, and I'm like, I like the taste of blood. One second. He's singing his little ass off, and he's doing a dance, sticking his tongue out, making weird eyes. The gestures, he yeah. He loves that. He watches Ozzy and Alice Cooper out of their minds on drugs in the 70s, and he's like, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be a cool, weird guy. He loves the idea of freaking people out. It gives him um, power. It, it's a sense of power and right. revenge. To yes. be the scary entity that's freaking you out. You're uncomfortable with this, but I'm not. You know, it's flipping the script. I got to give him credit. We are very lucky that he hasn't given in to more sadistic tendencies because yeah. the seeds are there. In terms of him at least having a decent moral baseline, 
if he was the kind of guy where it was revealed that he also likes to torture animals, all bets would be yeah. off. Yeah. If he hated animals too, and anything came out, <laughs> where, yeah, as much as he hates kids, if it somehow came out that he was caught tying down squirrels or, or cats yeah. and hurting them, yeah. I think he'd be capable of anything at that point. Agreed. Ugh. Man, I hate that it's hard for me to say this now because yeah. it used to be really easy. Five years ago, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Now, the nicest he gets now is like when he goes to Angie and Waltz and gets absolutely bled like a pig. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he equates being famous with having sponsorships? No. no. I think, <clears throat> like, if you have sponsorships, you're famous. I think he believes that. But I don't think not having sponsorships doesn't make you famous. Mm. I believe that he believes that he's famous. But I also believe that he believes that he believes deep down <laughs> that he's not that famous. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's weird because you'd think, like, as you grew in popularity as a famous YouTuber, that you would accrue other affiliate links and, and sponsors or yeah. any other thing. I would think that as he's grows and spreads his demon wings we'd get like a coupon code for i don't know some fucking dollar shave club yeah the, all the like shitty Nord ads VPN, you see on like like spotify yeah. and i feel like in the rungs of being solicited to make ads for these companies the lowest thing is the coupon code yeah go to this link they'll give me a mm -hmm. cut whatever then they approach here they say hey can you make a little intro for us and you give a little personal excerpt of how it benefited yeah. you and we'll pay a hundred bucks, whatever. I would love it if he actually tried to do an introduction for some company. Oh. What gets me is the, the personal story that they yeah. insist you create one. So disingenuous. Very much so. You ever watch Gaming There's, Historian? I've seen him, yeah. He did one for a alarm company. And I know that they built it in where they told him, you must do a personal story that relates to this, whether it's true or not. Ah, because yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. There was a series of break-ins in my local housing neighborhood where I reside, uh -huh. and I got <laughs> Simply Safe, and now I feel better. C Cobra no. doing that would be a complete dumpster fire. Here's, again, why it doesn't happen. Yeah. Imagine, if you will, let's say I owned a company, and I sent him an email. <laughs> or send him a super chat. Or I send him anything. And I said, Josh, I will pay you 250 American dollars if you make an intro to your video that includes the following. And it could be pretty minimal effort. Yeah. He is not gonna do it. He's gonna say, yeah. Well, maybe when I get around do it. He thinks he's pretty famous right now. Uh-huh. This is the same guy who was on an adult streaming service, we'll say inspecting himself, muttering to himself about having 26,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was actually one of my bullet points. That is crazy. There's probably a handful of people on Earth who have ever done that, who have ever yeah. stimulated themselves to the idea that they have a modicum of interest on the Internet. It's another That's power crazy. fantasy. It's very strange. More yeah. vindication. I'm pulling my hot dog, and I have mm -hmm. this many subs. Very powerful. Badass who hates rapists. I'll come to that. All right, already dead. Now we're getting really armchair psychologist <laughs> on this shit. <laughs> yeah. But I think that he knows that he's bald. Sure. And he knows that his teeth are disgusting. Mm. And he knows that his clothes are gross. And he knows that he doesn't shower like he should. He knows some of those things. Yeah. He believes that he's still really a strong guy and, like, has a monster hog. But those things are all somewhat subjective and aren't immediately observable. He can click on YouTube, go to his channel, and say, that's the number of people that like me. That's my worth. Oh. And... Other people don't have it, and I have it. And yeah. that is everything to him. 
It's mind boggling because he is so chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> that number is so important to him, the sub count. And yet he yeah. is so haphazard with the safety of his channel. He will oh, yeah. dox people. He is still doxing people and not really watching what he talks about. And imagine how crushed he would be. And I'm sure he has this as a plan, but doesn't realize what might happen. If he lost his channel, he would just start a new one, right? Yeah. But his sub count would not recover. It could not. I don't think it would ever be as high as it is now. No, I mean, we're talking about it, 10 yeah. years of accumulation, roughly. Yeah. Dead accounts, people that yeah. clearly aren't watching anymore, they would not be back. It would be catastrophic. It's one of those things, though, where I suspect it would be like, remember when he lost his Teespring? <laughs> and he was like, I'll just go to Customize Girl, which he wants to pretend is just as good. Probably be the same thing with oh. his YouTube channel. It wouldn't phase him in, in a public way. He would get on there. He'd get to like 5,000 subscribers within a day or two. And he'd say, see, I fucking knew it. Cobra always lands on his feet, you know, Man. or whatever. And then he'd get monetarization back. And yeah, you know, I got kicked out. That of alone channel. might be worth the transition. Now right? I'm in a, a bigger and better YouTube channel. Thanks, trolls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This YouTube channel has a dishwasher. It's got air conditioning. This kicks ass. Yeah. Me and my dad right. ripped up the carpet in my last YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> he's so unaware. It's not like he's producing content and then reflecting about how certain content does on his channel. Oh, yeah. He never even talks about views. He has never done something that would be pretty damn boring and then seen the view count tank and then change his ways. He never considers yeah. that. Let me raise you this. What if that awareness yeah. was present and he started changing his content specifically to chase views? Because some of the things that we like, he hates and won't do. He's never going to do a real live cooking video ever again. He's never going to do Donate to Talk Shit. He's not going to eat a piece of fruit and call Clint and say, how's it hey, going? Dad, I eat fruit. I love yeah. you. My trolls made me do this. What's up, man? Oh, hey, Dad. Just wanted to call and say I love you. Well, thanks, bud. I love you, too. What are you doing? Uh, streaming. Someone offered me 100 bucks to uh, stream myself eating a piece of fruit and calling you and saying I love you. Well, that's bizarre as hell. Really interesting, because the first thought is, if you have a regular human being and you say, oh, yeah, they're only doing stuff because it gets big views, it's a negative connotation, and you think the mm -hmm. content's going to kind of suck as a result. But with Cobra, right. all the things we talked about, these would actually be nice team. things that we'd want to see more yeah. of. A hundred percent. We like him despite the content he puts out. Mm -hmm. there, he, that uh, burger video we were talking about yeah. that came out, that's 45 minutes of him making guttural noises and explaining <laughs> the same burger. And $45. Um, <laughs> fucking sucked. It was terrible. I loved it. We we I watched it. Loved that video. Maybe I'm not as hardcore as you, Seizure, but that shit makes me want to blow my brains out. I'll watch him sit there and talk about Papa John's, giving him the option, <laughs> him taking it. Papa John's, you provided the stuffed crust. You gave me the option to add Alfredo sauce. And I took it. I'll watch him talk about famous Dave's bowl from Dave's famous bowl. One famous bowl from Dave's famous. But I will be goddamned if I'm going to watch this boy eat a fucking burger and tell me how good that burger is for 45 minutes. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. <laughs> he's not he's not making interesting stuff on no. purpose. For him it's I'm hungry. I really want a DoorDash. I feel kind of bad about it. Now it's a yeah. food review. It's for the channel. Yeah. I think a lot of what he does with the food stuff yeah. is he watches Badlands Chugs and Matt Stoney, the LA Beast and whatever guys eating whatever. I want to eat a whole bucket of legs on YouTube. Because that's that's what's hot on YouTube right now. The reason why people like like Matt Stoney 
or so famous on YouTube. Shout out to Matt Stoney. And he really thinks that's so cool. He, there's a video of him sitting there. I think he's pretty drunk. He like failed a challenge and he's like, I just wish I could do cool food challenges like the guys I like. You know what I mean? <laughs> it I may have been the KFC uh, yes. bucket and he gets in his weird little shrimp fetal position. I just can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the shrimp fetal position. I love that pose. Get those ideas in your head where it's like, yes, this challenge sounds a good idea. I just like, nope. He was waxing poetic about the the foodies of YouTube, as he calls them, who do these cool challenges. And he wishes he could do them, but he just can't. No. I think that's a lot of what he's going for on those food videos. And it it's a great excuse to go in the negative for the food that you're lusting over. This is the sad truth about Josh, is that we are on the precipice. And people have been saying this for a while, but we're really starting to get there where his dreams and stuff, ideas about becoming famous, are becoming more remote. Oh, and yeah. he's going to have to do a lot more coping when it comes to, like, projecting his life out, whereas five years ago he could say, well, I'll get a girlfriend when I get a girlfriend, and, you know, I'm young, I'm still figuring it out, still a spring chicken. Now he's going to have to eat a bunch of bowls of shit in the near future, and part of that's going to be... Him sitting there with his arms crossed, grumpily, saying, well, I lost my fucking teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> Angrily admitting to the trolls that he lost his teeth. and They're just know, teeth. All you can do is When I become a millionaire, it. I'm going to get teeth plugs. He's going to put a bandana over his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. I like that idea because he used to have the little chef hat on all the time to yeah. conceal the hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> what he could do is if he did have to do the extraction, if he sold those teeth at a oh, yeah. very high price, he might be able to score at least a few implants. I can think of one person in particular who would buy those teeth. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's he good to own to have those. carpet, wand, and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have that summer where just you or maybe your brother you didn't see at home playing video games? And that's great for like two months. And that last month is just like, ugh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you stay up really late, and you, it's just... Some people don't want to give up the lifestyle. They just want that to I be guess. their lives. Don't you feel like showering a billion times after something <laughs> like that, though? There's something about at least you're growing up, and you got your whole life ahead of you, but just imagine doing that in your 30s, and it's like, God. well, I just have getting old to look forward to. It's not like he recognizes that and says, well, I should probably change my trajectory. I should change my habits. I should do something different. No, no I'll uh, think about that after the next episode of Rocket Power. Yeah, maybe yeah. if I can get around to it. <laughs> if you lived like that and you weren't depressed, I would be shocked. Eating terrible food, having no social interaction, getting up late, drinking constantly. Oh. Just coping there, sitting there talking about how one day you're going to make it big without doing any work. And your little moments as you're falling asleep, it's like, oh, I just got to believe a little harder. I'm going to show them. They're going to all be think, punished. I think he's sitting there trying to cast the make my life less of a depression pit spell <laughs> and thinking, maybe my magic's not that powerful. Do you think there's any of that no. in there? If your belief wavers, then it won't be as strong. You can't <laughs> That's give true. up hope. I mean, it's kind of like a sunk cost fallacy thing at this point. If he reneges on the magical thinking, what is he left with? Yeah, reality, which is kicking his ass. He may as well um, just disintegrate I, if he gives up on that. He'll just turn into dust. How would you even set about rebuilding your life at that point? I mean, that would be... I'd call Clint. Dad! <laughs> it's all true! <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Dad, I want off that fucking 
wild ride. Take me home, put me in the basement, get me a job. I want to work at the fucking camera store. Revolutions all the time, people changing the world with crime, with violence and anger, hunger, whatever. I find that ridiculous, if not meticulous. I do my best to guard my own premises. What's your name? What's your name, fool? I'm a lord, everybody knows my name. I got it all, cash, money, and fame. What's your name? What's your name, fool? Where you come from? Where you come from? You think you're big? You think you're big, kid? What's that sound? Who that be? Huh? Let's not waste your time changing the world with crime. Give it, give it, go. Alright, huh? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Somebody do something for somebody. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm not. Just one of us to guide. Everybody do this and go. We're alive. 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 Give me all of this, and now push the button. Come on, come on, I'm ready for all of a sudden. Right? No. 